the uh, title of our webinar is Managing Dairy Manure for Increased Soil Health and Forage Production Sustainability. I will be presenting together with um, Juan Carlos Ramos Sanchez and Carlos Urias. Um, as you mentioned, uh, Leslie, Juan Carlos is our own farm research coordinator. He's been with us for the last two and a half years or so and taking the lead on our value of manure study that we'll be presenting on today. Carlos Irias joined us a little over a year ago as an undergrad intern uh, from San Marano, returned to our team this winter uh, to work in our, our program, and just yesterday got a message that he will be joining us as a new master student starting in January. We have on the screen um, a lot of other names, uh, that is in recognition of the team that we have here, many of the research projects that we will be presenting on today are uh, possible because of the contributions of many others in our team. That includes our summer intern program. Just a quick shout out for anybody on the, on the call here today with an interest in uh, sending interns our way for the summer. And a thank you to all, all of the students that helped collecting soil samples and plant samples. We work in New York. It's a dairy state. Dairy farming is really important. We are fifth in terms of milk production right now. And that also determines uh, a large portion of our landscape. So lots of acres and corn ground for silage or grain. We have alfalfa, hay, grass fields, um, some soybean as well in support of uh, dairy and uh, agriculture. This is a map of concentrated animal feeding operations in the state of New York. This is just the farms that uh, meet the qualifications, the minimum number of animals for medium and large CAFOs. There are many more farms in the state of New York, but I just wanted to share this one to show you that agriculture, animal agriculture is throughout, is practiced throughout the state with the exception of the Adirondack Mountains, which is right here. I'm not sure if you can see my cursor. Uh, and then uh, the Long Island area. We also have a lot of water in the state of New York. We are not irrigated in terms of field crops typically. Um, and part of our, our, uh, our goal here with animal agriculture as well is to make sure that we keep uh, clean water clean and that we uh, treat whatever needs to be treated so that we have the lowest possible environmental footprint with our agricultural systems. We don't work in a vacuum, we're connected to watersheds. The Chesapeake Bay watershed is a big one. Uh, in, the, in the black box is the southern tier of New York State. It's part of the Chesapeake Bay watershed. We also connect it to the Great Lakes watersheds and the uh, uh, Lake Champlain uh, watershed on the eastern part of the country. I run uh, what we call the Nutrient Management SPEAR program. Um, that is a program that is designated by the College of Ag and Life Sciences here in New York as um, the, the group uh, responsible for developing field crop fertility guidelines. We uh, develop fertility guidelines that impact about a million acres of cropland in the state of New York, land grant guidelines for nitrogen, phosphorus, manure, fertilizer, all of that. We do that in partnership with a lot of people, research collaborations throughout the state with farmers, farm advisors, and we involve a lot of students in our programs as well. The bottom line is asking relevant questions, doing the sound science to answer those questions for agricultural profitability and protection of the environment. Our program has six main focal areas. The one on the top here is that land grant responsibility for the development of fertility guidelines for field crops in New York. And the second one here is to work on soil health and climate resiliency. We work on precision agriculture, dairy sustainability. Juan Carlos is leading our own farm research network. And then we work with the students for student engagement uh, now and, and in the future. We put a little outline together for our, our uh, uh, presentation here. Now that we've set the stage for what we do and what the state looks like, um, I'm going to dive into the nitrogen crediting system that we currently have in place. Our Carlos is going to talk about our statewide value manure project. I will pick up with some slides on microbial activity. Carlos is going to do the manure variability slides, and then we'll do our wrap up. So to dive right in on the nitrogen credits. The system that we have in place, the Land Grant University guidelines for crediting manure, 
recognize that we have two major components in terms of nitrogen in the manure. There is uh, quick nitrogen, signaled here by the rabbit, in organic nitrogen that can be used or lost, depending on how we manage it. One of the ways in which we can capture more is by applying it closer to when plants need it and by mixing it with the soil through injection or incorporation. The longer we delay that, um, the lower the credits are going to be from this inorganic component of the manure. Um, the two other sites here is the organic nitrogen. And there are two fractions there. There's a fraction that gets mineralized during the year of application and a fraction that gets mineralized in the year and two years after that application. And then we recognize that not all manure is created equal, but the only distinction we have is less than 18% solids versus 18% or more solids. The numbers are slightly different with lower credits for the more solid manure than for the liquid manure. So in regard to this crediting system, nitrogen value of manure can be increased by capturing the inorganic N over time. This is the system we have in place right now. Back in 2016, one of the farmers knocked on the door and said, hey, I, I want to do some on-farm research. I want to, want to get a better sense of, of the value of manure that I'm working with. And we worked with him to put in place this design. We have long strips here that go from left to right. Three of those strips received manure. They are, uh, they are the ones that have the arrow pointing towards them. And then there were three strips that did not receive manure. And then we went over those, those strips with different amounts of citrus nitrogen. In this case, it was ranging from zero all the way up to 175 pounds of nitrogen per acre over the top of those strips. And the one thing that was really clear from the, uh, uh, the picture taken from a, a small airplane here was that the strips where manure was applied were a lot darker in color. And even when there was no citrus nitrogen applied, if you look at the comparison of zero within the manure strip versus 175 pounds where manure was not applied, it looks like the zero strips with the manure look better than what we were able to achieve with the fertilizer. And we clearly see the zero cider nitrogen and zero manure plots separating themselves out as well. This was a very telling picture. A farmer um, conducted this study two years in a row. And the data also showed the same uh, as we were seeing from the, uh, the images. So here's the nitrogen rate at the bottom and the yield. This was harvested for corn grains, so bushels per acre on the y-axis. 2016, we see with the gray dots, the plots that did not receive manure, yield increased as nitrogen rates increased up to a certain level, and then it, it leveled off. As soon as manure was applied, we got the brown orange dots here and a flat line, signaling that there was no need for additional fertilizer nitrogen once that manure was applied in these plots. Um, but what we also noticed that the, the brown line here um, is much higher than what we were able to achieve with the gray dots here. So the manure plots were out yielding the fertilizer plots, even though um, it was not a nitrogen limitation in the, in the fertilizer plots. In 2017 and 2017, uh, two varieties, two trials there, uh, same results. Manure always out yielded what we could achieve without manure and with fertilizer only. And in these scenarios also, manure eliminated the need for extra nitrogen. I should say, this is just an example. Uh, it's not a given that manure will eliminate nitrogen fertilizer needs, but it shows that it will definitely reduce the amount of nitrogen that we needed for those trials. So we have a calculator that Juan Carlos put together that allows people to put in the manure analysis and do calculations for how much nitrogen do we expect from that application. But our current manure crediting system dates back several decades. The yield bumps that we are seeing in those trials that I talked about in 2016 and 17 are not taken into account with our current crediting system. And we know there have been lots of technological advances 
resulting in new manure sources and equipment that can apply that in different type, different ways to a field. So because of the technological advances and the fact that our current data and current system is, is, is quite old, it was really important to start engaging with our producers, with our farm advisors and say, hey, can we get together and see if we need to tweak the system? And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Juan Carlos.